Good to see you. And John is already in the pose. So Virasana is a pose that is great, according to Mr. Iyengar, for knees. I have a block placed on the wide, wide, not skinny, so that both sits bones gets an opportunity to root down. Sometimes the two body parts that tends to not love this pose is either knees, for which I invite more height, more height under the tush, more height. If it's the ankles that feel strained, then elevate the shins and let the ankles drop off behind. So maybe a couple of blankets under the shins, but let the ankles drape off. Our ankles don't get a lot of opportunity to stretch out completely unless we practice yoga. In poses such as cobra or upward facing dog or camel pose, we take the ankle into the full extension. And that is important because as part of the front line and if there's a kink anywhere, it affects everything else. Thighs parallel to one another. So just look down at your thigh bones not consolidated, but not splaying out either. That may mean that you'd be more comfortable sitting up a little taller. And in your mind, now go back to every little toe back there and let every toe nail just settle down. And if they're not quite settled down, you can use your fingers and give each one a little, little invitation. And also I'm using my hands to show your feet. Uh, be mindful that your feet are not sickling in, but can you come straight down on the top of the foot? So again, we just try to put our body in the most anatomically intention so that everything works a little bit better. Today, I might just take your palms and place them on the thighs, facing down. That is a grounding gesture. Let the weight of your legs support your spine by rooting, grounding, and creating a solid base. Feel your sits bones evenly on your support. Rock the pelvis back and forth. And then come to sit exactly at the tip of your cis bone. That way the pelvis is balanced front to back. And now also with the even pressure side to side. Here is where the sacrum sits neutral. And that allows the spine to rise up with the least amount of effort as it draws upward. Let that be an invitation to the sternum, the breastbone to lift, but without again creating an overarching in the low back. So can you lift the sternum without the lumbar spine getting jammed? Let's roll the shoulders up and down the back. Draw the shoulder blades down. Lengthening up through the crown of the head. And then let your eyes relax. Let the skin on your face relax. Let the jaw soften. And bring your awareness to your breath in and out. Katie, welcome. Good to see you. In and out. Notice your lower abdomen, inviting that to expand with the breath. Expansion all the way down below the belly button, down to the pubic bone. Relax. 
when we breathe in this manner. And if you're not sure if your belly does expand, just place one hand on the lower abdomen. Does it expand on the in-breath? Is the diaphragm contracting, facilitating the stretching downward of the lung, literally sucking the breath into your body? Allow the out-breath to get a little bit longer than the in-breath. The diaphragmatic breathing is the breath that corresponds with our root chakra, Muladhara. You know the name from Mulabandha, the pelvic lift and engagement. So as you breathe in and out, do you sense the breath drawing down into your pelvis? almost like it's moving into the leg because we have that gentle pushing down of the organs into the pelvis. So this breath helps us ground, root down, stand our ground. So when you feel anxious or nervous or stressed, yourself to spend a few moments with diaphragmatic breathing, getting into your rooting into your legs. This chakra, this energy center is the right to be. The seed sound is LAM, L-A-M. The color is red the color for action. Allowing our trunk to connect to the legs. I forgot to close the door and Princess decided to join on in. If your eyes are closed, I invite you to open them. And let's take the arms out to the sides. Let's stretch up, interlace the fingers. Draw the chin towards the chest. Side bend to the right. To the left. To center, and let's twist. To the right, lifting up. To the left, lifting up again. And let's take the arms down. We'll bring the legs out in front. Must tend to our feet. Let's just shake the legs out. I know. And we'll take the right leg in and we'll rock it from side to side. I know you can leave, it's okay. Back and forth. Getting a little WD-40 into the hip joints. And then placing the foot across your thigh, across your left thigh. Spin them out. And then threading the fingers in between the toes, web to web. And then to start with some ankle circles, clockwise and counterclockwise. Keeping our joints well lubricated through regular mobility. Traction the toes to the top of the foot, stretch them under, go back and forth. The toe, on, the toe off is what is called the ability to turn the toes all the way. And then ring the front of the foot out, ring it from side to side. Reestablishing the tensecrity, the 
uh, bunch the ability of our trampoline. Squeeze the toes around the fingers, fingers around the toes, and then take your top hand, wrap it around, and give everything a really hearty hug before your feet. And let's take the top hand off, relax the toes, but pull your fingers out. It's a traction. Open these joints, spread the fingers, and release. This little piggy, now we're going to use two hands today. Uh-huh, we are stepping it up. Take your right hand and pull the other four away so the pinky toe is now isolated. Give it a tuck and a roll all by itself. And then take the next toe, pull the other three. Give that a little tuck and a roll. Hammer toes, claw toes, bunions, plantar fasciitis, all conditions of the feet that greatly affect how we walk and how much we move. All the way to the big toe, each toe gets a tuck and a pull. Once you get to the big toe, take your left hand to your right big toe and then give it a really good little stir about. Arthritis of this joint, I see it frequently. And like I said, it affects everything uh, you use above the feet. Let's compri or compress the size of the foot in this rolly good. Roll back and forth. And then we'll go for our little fascia walk. Take your thumbs, just walk up and down. How does your foot look? Are you making love of your foot with your eyes and your hands right now? Are you thinking, oh, dear Lord, I don't like this? It's a precious, precious packages we have here. Now grab onto the heel and give the heel a little wiggle, wiggle. That gets really stuck. Thickest fascia in the body. And then take the foot down, and we're gonna take the thumbs in behind the knee, and we're gonna do the pinch and pull, pinch and pull. Get everything loosened up. And then once you come back up, take your fingers in behind the knee, thumbs are now to the outside, I'm gonna walk down to my six bones and give my hamstring the same love. So, uh, don't be mean, but mean business as you go in there, get everything sliding, gliding, and moving. And then let's release the right leg out. And just notice if you're sitting maybe now a little lower on the right side, just from this work, I say we do the other side. Getting the hips moving and grooving. And take the foot across, slide the fingers in, and this foot is tighter um, for me than the other side. So paying attention to this, why is my right foot changing? Well, I know why it's changing, because I've been lazy on my homework, so the fascia is beginning to all everything tighter together. So when we are familiar with how our bodies feel and work and we tend to what we need to tend to, when it's just a little bit, my neighbor loves to say a stitch in time. Boy, and that is the yoga practice. Around and around we go. Now let's traction the toes to the top, to the bottom, back and forth. And let's bring it from side to side. And the squeeze the toes around fingers, fingers around toes, top hand in position. Whew. Get a good squeeze. Get the blood all the way to the tip of the toes. Relax the top hand, relax the toes, but pull everything. Thing. longer. Stretch it out, spread the fingers, and release. Again, left hand holds the other four, so the pinky toe gets the royal treatment all by itself. Tucking, rolling, opening the joints. 32 joints in our feet, 32 joints. Next toe, so spreading the toes as you Prepare to do that little tuck and pull and roll. Once you make it to the big toe, now the left hand is gonna 
help out as I give that a good stir. Arthritis, your common walk of the walk of the mill, walk of the road, walk of what? Um, arthritis is um, barnacles, and movement is what helps these barnacles not form. All right, thumbs to the bottom. Oh no, we would do a squeezer. Squeeze the foot and then roll it from side to side. Again, get these metatarsals to roll. So they're not all stuck together like a frozen blob. And then we take, go for a walk. Remember the story about my student's mom who had foot pain and went to the doctor. Nope, not wrong, it persisted. And it turned out that she had stepped on a needle and broken off in her foot. And, but if you don't check in with your feet and you can't reach them, then things can go really badly. Let's give the heel a wiggle. So spend time with every part of yourself. And then from here, let's do the calf. You know how when they, when I fly, I like to make sure that the mechanics have gone through every bit of it to make sure that it's where it needs to be. Pinch and pull. And then we'll go in the opposite direction. Fingers now going behind and I walk my way down to the sits bone, giving the hamstring a good little once over and then stretch the leg out. How's it feeling? All right, great. Now let's come onto our back body and have a strap nearby. And as you come onto your back, make sure I stay on target here. Pause. Pausing and sensing. Are there any areas that are a little chatty? Does one leg roll out more than the other? And as always, if the chin pulls away from the chest, do support the head so that the neck doesn't get overly bent, cranked. Let's draw the legs together. And let's inhale the arms up overhead. We're gonna pick a little bit from the morning sequence today. And let's pump the ankles as you exhale. Pump, 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 pump. Pause as you breathe in and pump, 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 pump again. Let the whole body rock back and forth. So the back seam, just like the front seam, it all connects. Let's do it one more time. And then let's do ankle circles. As you exhale again, big juicy ankle circles. Pause as you breathe in, switch direction. Have your feet travel together, traveling together so that your insteps touches. And then you turn and you turn so your legs are tight in that, like you had a unileg. Let's do about three to each side, really irrigating the root of our tree. And pause it after the third ish. Let the arms, when you're done, just relax the arms out to the sides. And then let's take the right heel between the left big toe and second toe. Another little toe spread, left hand to the right shoulder, take a breath in and exhale, let's twist to the left. Coming back to center, so keep the legs firm, not rigid, but firm. 
moving from side to side, you switch hands and heels every time you travel through the middle. We'll exhale into the twist, inhale back to center. You guys are pro at this one. When legs are weak, the spine is lacking support. Hence the reason our standing poses are emphasized. Do one more time. And we are back at center. Pausing at center again. And just check in, feeling your body. And then let's bend up the knees. Take the arms down alongside the body. Walk the feet as tight to the heels as you can, but now lift and spread the toes. Lift and spread the toes. The big toe mount is down. Pinky toe mount is down. Check. Inner and outer heels. So we have four corners under each foot. Stretch the toes forward. Keep the arches lifting. Padamanda. So the root lift. This is where bridge pose begins. Inhaling, lift the hips. Keep these four corners under tight surveillance, lowering down. Let's take a buffer breath. And let's do it again from the four corners under each foot, lifting up. When the knees begin to splay or collapse inward, We've lost these four corners. The foundation of the pose is uneven. Let's do that one more time. Lifting up. Now lift the heels, lift the heels. Can you get a little bit more height? And then take the heels down. Ground the four corners. And the back of the shoulders. But let the face be relaxed, relaxed, relaxed. Now, take your hands to your glutes. Are they turned on? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or are they just sort of hanging in the wind? Give them an extra little squeeze, 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 glutes. And lowering down. As you come down, let your back relax. And let's take our stretch. That's just a good time to do our hamstring stretches. But let's start with the calf stretch. So let the strap be around your toe mount. Strap around the toe marks. Keep your left leg bent up. And now you're gonna have a little tuck of war with the toes, with the foot and your hand. The hand is gonna win, drawing the toes towards the shin. And then the foot is gonna win, pulling the arms up again. And let's take the toes back down. Hands are winning. And lifting up, keep the big toe mount and the pinky toe mount both pressing into the strap evenly one more time. And then from here, let's slide the strap around the front of the heel. And we arrive at our little hamstring event. We're not going to make it a big event today. But it does feel good, doesn't it? If your leg is 90 degrees, then straighten your left leg out. So right leg is straight, right leg is completely straight. There are serious spines for right buckled knees. So just take your hand to your right knee. Now as you exhale, contract and pull the kneecap down towards the hip so the right leg is super firm. While 
lengthening up through the right heel, lengthening up. So it's, it's a, there's an eye behind your knee and it is now wide open. And then let that eye relax a little bit. And then again, open that eye behind the knee wide. Is the hand, is the quadricep turned on? Remember the hamstrings cannot release if the quads are not engaged. And if the knee is bent, the quads can't engage. It's impossible. Let's take the strap into your right hand. Left arm on top of the left thigh. If your left knee is bent, looking, it looks like they are straight all along. If the left knee is bent here, then you would drop that up to the side first. I know you all know that, just a nice little reminder. Let's take a breath in and exhale. Take the right leg to the side. This is our triangle pose. I like to keep my right elbow on the floor. It prevents me from going a kapumpi. Both legs are super firm and the four corners under each foot still activated. Big toe mount, look, pinky toe mount, in and out of heel. I still connect to the root of my tree. And let's inhale all the way up. Let's take the left foot up under the strap, toe mount, slip the right leg out, slip the right leg out. So the right leg is still to the sky. You guys are moving ahead of me. <laughs> now take the breath in, flatten the low back and slowly lower the right leg to the floor. Let it hover just for a moment and get it a little bit longer. And then let it come all the way down. And we'll bend it up once it's down so we balance in both sides. Now, calf, invite the toes down so hands are winning again. So strap is around the toe mount. And now the foot's winning. I'm putting on my super, super high heels. But now my hands are winning. So just going back and forth. Both the soleus, the deep calf muscle, and the gastrocnemius, they cross over the ankle. The gastroc also crosses over the knee joint. So releasing that supports both ankle and knee health. Now let's slide the strap back around the heel. And again, if the leg is 90 degrees, do straighten out your left. That'd be your right leg, wouldn't it? But ground it firmly. Ground the right leg. Or if it feels better to keep it straight, keep it straight. Push out through the heel. Get as much of your, the back of your thigh, of the right thigh on the mat. And let's take a breath in and exhale. Pull your left kneecap down to the hip as you reach up through the heel. So we're cre creating a two-way stretch. As you breathe in, everything softens. That magical eye behind the knee relaxes a little bit. But now as you exhale, it's going to open wide and surprise again. Knee draws down to the hip. The hip is grounding, but the heel lifts up, trying to put a footprint on the ceiling. And one more time. And then we'll take the strap into the left hand, right hand on the top of the right thigh or and you can keep it here too, but if your right knee is bent, release that out to the side before you take the left leg out to the side. That is a helpful ballast 
I want to take the leg out for our sutta. Tita Trikonasana. Or sometimes just called hamstring stretch number two. Parsva. Utita. Hasta. Padangustasana. This rolls right off the tongue. But we can break it up. Utita, extend it. Supta, supine. Pada, foot. So there you have it. Now let's inhale, draw the leg back up. Take the strap off. Draw the low back to the floor. And now slowly release the left leg down. Keep the belly pulling in and up, in and up, in and up. Let's do a full body stretch. Take the arms down, bend up the knees, and we will travel into tabletop. Support the knees as always if tabletop is not their happy place. Tabletop. Cat and cow, rounding by pulling the belly button up. And inhale, arch. Contract the muscles on the back, pull them to the spine. Relax those as the front contracts, back and forth. And then let's take the left leg back. So we know this is a nice little place to do a calf stretch. So we're gonna do a little pit stop today. So left leg is back, lifting the left leg up. Keep the leg firm. Now bend the knee, pull the heel towards the tush. You feel the hamstring contracting. So you sure do. Now slowly extend the leg back out. And lower down, toes back on. Press the hands down and forward as you press the heel back. And see if the left leg can get a little floaty. Step the left leg back to the right through plank pose. Plank pose. And we'll take the right knee down. Lifting the left leg up, straight up. So belly supports this little lift, bend the knee in. Give it a little squeeze. Straighten the leg. Take the toes down again. Press the heel back, hands forward. Does the right knee begin to float up? Step it back to the left. Firm legs, wrapping muscle around bone. And exhale. Ardha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Let the head hang. And then Another little calf event, pedaling your dog. And as you do so, look at your toe off. And you're giving your toes a little massage along with your ankles. Now lifting up high on the tiptoes. The highest heels you've ever worn. Let's bend the knees and keep the hips high. Bend the knees, keep the hips high. Now pull the heels back. Press the heels straight back. So don't think about getting them on the mat, but just lengthen them back, 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 back. I know, things are heating up. And then look up as you inhale and walk and step the feet to the hands. 
hands to the feet, hands to the hips, and then inhale, press into the heels to come all the way up. Boom. So last week we played a little bit with Tadasana with the strap. So let's do that just in our mind's eye. But today we're gonna to put a block between the thighs to make it a little bit more, a little juicier, if you will. At least I think it gets juicier. So here, we had the strap behind and the strap was pulling the arms down as we were lifting up through the sternum. Firmly ground the heels, ground the heels, ground the heels. Now bend the knees a wee bit. So it's like a teeny little fierce pose, Utkatasana. And then as if you are tied together with a really tight bungee cord, you're gonna have to really push to straighten the knees, lift up, lift up, lift up. And as you're grounding firmly through the heels, notice, did the tailbone draw down? and the abdomen in and up. So helping reorient the pelvis. We spend a lot of time in an anterior tilt, really jamming the low back, asking the hamstrings to be the main stabilizer, not the jaw. So let's do it one more time. Bend the knees, ground the heels, and then straighten the legs. Mm. Do you feel strong? Ground it. It's like, don't y'all mess with me today. That's what our legs facilitate. Now keep that sense of firm engagement as we take the arms forward. And then exhale, pull the hips back for Utkatasana. Sitting back, sitting back. Draw the belly in and up, in and up. Keep the low back long. It's easy to come into an over arch here, like banana backing the whole bit. Nay, nay, this is a straight ski slope. You might like to take the arms up, lift the heart, but don't, don't mess with the lower part of your ski slope. So lifting the arms, and inhale, standing all the way up. And let's take the arms down. Oh, you guys look good. I think we can add a little juice to this. Let's inhale, take the arms up. Ground the heels, ground the heels. Maintain that sense as you now lift the heels. And the block, so happy to have the block. Now bend the knees, Utkatasana again. Squeeze the block, squeeze the block. And then lengthen the back body, lengthen the back. Reach, breathe. And let's straighten the legs. Tall, 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 tall. Keep the hands where they are as if you are grabbing onto a bar as you slowly descend the heels. Slowly descend the heels. And take the arms down. Let's take the block out. Yes. Taking the block out. And, mm-hmm, 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 check it. Stand sideways on your mat. Bring the fingers together at heart center, fingertips at heart center. So the classical Iyengar stance. And on the in-breath, step or jump. The feet wide apart. Let's turn the right foot in 10 to 15 degrees and left leg out. Let's take the hands to the hips so they are just out of the equation. It's all about the legs, right? Exhale, bend your right knee, W your left leg, sorry. And straighten it. So a little re revisit from last week. Bend it again. Does your knee track straight out over the second toe? And does it hang out right over the 
ankle. That's a happy place for your left knee to be. Now lift and spread the toes, both feet. Lift and spread the toes. Stretch the toes forward. With the arches lifting, now let's bring the toes down. Arches lifted, toes are down. Lift your left heel, put the high heels on again. Back leg is very far. Maybe sink down a little deeper. And for a little bit more, juice, lift the back heel. Balance both toe mounts. I know, legs are working hard. Take the back heel down, front heel down, and straighten the front knee. So now look down at your knee again, your left knee, the center of your left knee. Does it drop inward? Roll the thigh bone out, 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 so that the knee does not collapse in. So that's a hip action, very much a hip action. Now let your hand just come to the leg wherever it lands, wherever it lands. Press your leg up into the palm of your hand. Press the leg up into the palm of your hand. Keep getting the calves involved. Isn't that a nice place to hang out? So right now, my right side of my body, it's a mountain pose. If I take the hand down alongside the hips, it is doing a full mountain. Now the left, let's go like, okay, yeah, something going on. All right, let's soften the left knee and push all the way up, boom. Turn the feet in the other direction. So your left foot turned in a little bit. And I know Sally, you're taking good care of yours. Four corners of each foot. Hands to the hips. So here's where things can get really sticky in the three musketeers. Dial your left, your right foot back again to center. So we call this wide-legged mountain pose, right? Pelvis is neutral. Now dial your right foot back out again. Did your pelvis stay in the same place? Or did the pelvis have a do? Did it has your did it did it need to accommodate a little bit? That happens. Now bending your right knee. And straighten it again. And you just look down at it. What's it doing? You know what it's doing? What's that bumper sticker? Do you know where your kids are? There should be one that says, do you know where your knees are? It tracks straight forward and it comes to land exactly over the ankle, pointing at the second toe. That's such a happy place for the knee to be. It not have to be a super deep pose, but these two concepts, I suggest that they are absurd. Let's lift and spread the toes, get the four corners of the feet well anchored. Stretch the toes forward and let them come down. So it's like a tree frog. You're really suctioning yourself onto the mat. So when you lift the front heel, when you lift your right heel, you're steady as a tree frog. And then when you lift the back heel, you're still suctioned on, right? Ish. Be kind, Sally, yes. You may not want to do the heel lift on your left leg. Let the back heel come down, front heel come down. And then with the hands right in the hip creases, all we're gonna do now is just straighten the right leg. And that's gonna hinge me like a little teapot to the side. When my spine is neutral, not side bending. And I'm just gonna take my hand, let it come to land exactly where it's gonna be without again side bending. The left side of your body is in mountain pose. Does it feel like mountain pose? Yeah, ish. Now let's lift your right shin or knee up into your hand. Lift shin or knee up into your right palm. Are your leg firm? The firm, ground it. And inhale, come all the way up. Parallel feet. 
toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe, heel toe. Step all the way in. Mm. Let's take the arms out to the sides. Take the right arm under the left. Eagle. So right arm crosses over. Twirl the forearms together. Back of the hands or the palms comes together. Draw the shoulders down. Lift the elbows up. That's a nice little event going on from the back. So we're going to make it a little bit more active. So not a passive stretch, but an active stretch. By, in essence, pulling the forearms apart, which is a little bit of a brain event. It feels like you're pulling them towards one another, which is a direction as you pull them apart. Now let the chin go down to the chest. Chin relaxes down towards the chest. And everything below the shoulders is in mountain pose. Mountain pose, heels are grounding, legs are firm. And now we're gonna take it into first Utkatasana leg. So I invite you to step your legs close together. That keeps the knees safe as we bend the knees. I'll turn to the side, bend the knees. So now we are back in Utkatasana. So sit the hips back, keep the spine, and then lift your right heel. Let your left foot become the tree frog foot again. Four corners, well rounded. And then you negotiate. Should I plant my right heel back down where it was or maybe take it across the left thigh? Here the toes can come down for support. The foot can lift. Do the same with your shins as you did with the forearms. Pull the shins apart. Pull the shins apart. The powerful eagle sitting, just watching it all. We'll take the right leg back. Spread your wings. Spread the wings. And stand up. Mm. Other side, lift the arms, take your work. That would be the left under the right. Twirling the forearms, back of the hands or the palms. Let's draw the shoulders down, elbows up. And again, do the isometric pull of the forearms as you bow the head towards your heart. Like the eagle tucking this beak under the feathers. Now keeping vigilant. The body's still in mountain pose, heels are grounding. Firm. And now step the legs close together. Lift the gaze so you're looking straight forward before you bend the knees and we sit back down again. Sit back. So keep the weight firmly in the heels. And now we'll negotiate. Invite your left heel to lift. Is the right leg Say, got it. Taking the leg across. We're we'll taking it back down for fierce pose. Bending the knees, bending the knees. The toes can stay down for support. Pulling the shins together. Now pulling the shins apart is what I'm trying to say. I, I heard the question mark. Let's do one more breath. And then take it back. Utkatasana. Take the arms out. And exhale, stand up, taking flight. And we are ready to come onto our back again. So with that said, let's travel to a dog. That just seems like a good idea. Get it all 
lengthen back out. A dog a day, they say. Shake the head. And then we'll take the knees down and come onto our back. Take your block. Walk the feet in. And then lift the hips, slide the block low, medium, but not high. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't go high. And then place the block right under your sacrum, the sacrum. So that means that the tailbone is hanging off. Just hanging off. This makes the sacrum neutral, as if we were standing in mountain pose. That's the purpose. Rolling the shoulders under, but don't pull them down towards the hips. Just roll them under. If we over pull them towards the hips, we begin to flatten our cervical spine, our neck. And there is no reason for that. Let's take the right leg in. Take the left leg in. Now keep your tailbone moving towards the floor. So lift the heart, lift the heart. This is a back bend. Does it feel like a back bend? Does it feel like bridge pose? Because it's bridge pose in your trunk, in your spine, you're doing bridge. And then lift one leg at a time to the sky. And if that is not a happy place for you today, place the feet back down on the mat. So the back of the head, gently rest. Back of the shoulders, drawing down. Sternum is lift towards your chin. So it's like a teeny little shoulder stand. And we get a lot of the same benefits as we do in the shoulder stand, but we let go of a lot of the risks of neck compression, wonky shoulders, collapsed spines. Here, that's all taken care of. How cool is that? Keep the legs active. Keep the legs active. Don't let them hang. And you're still reaching up into the heels, into the feet. So even in inversions, the legs are working to support the spine, not collapsing. And then bending the knees. Draw one knee a little closer to the chest as you negotiate the other foot to the floor to prevent torquing the sacrum. And then press the floor foot down so you can gently land the other foot. Yes, we must do the squeeze and release. So inhale, press the feet down. Squeeze the buns. And then relax. And repeat. Five more times. And now you get a little bit of feedback from the block. Are the buns squeezing? We'll talk more about that next week when it is hips and pelvis and sacrum. A hot mess. But we are well on our way having gotten our legs well straightened out. So that supports the hips just as the hips support the legs. After about the fifth, lift up just high enough where you can move the block out and let the 
your back body just come to rest. And then sliding the legs out. If you have knee thingies, then I do um, suggest that maybe slide support under the knees to help the knee joint not collapse inward or downward. But give it your knees a little space. And I would, yes, Sally, I would do it on both sides. And for therapeutic purposes, what you can do is using sandbags or rice bags, because they're about the same as sandbags. So in, in a Shavasana, you can place bags. You're going to need three for each leg. And the um, grocery store may think that you've suddenly gotten really fond of rice, but you'll place one at the top one below the knee, and then one on top of the knee. And that helps open the knee joint. Now allow yourself to relax completely. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, let go. Let your body melt into the mat. Another breath in. And again, exhale, let go, relax. Bring awareness again to your lower abdomen as you breathe in and out. Sense the center, the dantian, your powerhouse. Expanding outward, down into the pelvis, into the legs, and upward. Chest, lungs, shoulders, and arms. so that the whole body receives the waves from the diaphragmatic breath. The breath is your engine. Shallow breath. It's really hard on the body if that is our breathing mantra. It's like putting a two-cylinder engine into your Lamborghini. Why would you do that? The belly breath is eight cylinders, 12 cylinders. As you now begin to deepen your breath. Wiggling fingers and toes. Bend up your knees. And rock the knees gently from side to side. Rolling all the way over onto one side. Pause. Speed gets trapped in our bodies. Even when there's no need for it. We rush, we hurry. 
Let yourself just quiet down. And keep that sense of stillness as you use your arms and hands to press up into a comfortable seated posture. We'll bring the palms together at heart center. And we'll close with the chant for peace, Om Shanti 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 Om. We chant when we feel ungrounded, fearful, anxious, invites peace into the world, our lives and our heart center. I invite you to join me. Let's take a deep breath in. Om Shanti 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 Om. And bow your head towards your heart, towards your roots, your vessel that affords you so much exploration. Enjoy. We'll draw the gaze up. Namaste. And I will stop the recording, invite you to unmute for questions and comments.